We in the building. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Beyond back. Sunday. What episode is this? What we on? Uh, I don't know. It feel like a hundred. It feel like a hundred, but it, it ain't like a humble. <laughs> the number one Christian entertainment podcast in the world is in the building. Yes, Beyond Sir Sunday, Steve. where we take you beyond the pulpit. You know, we don't let you just see what it look like on Sunday. We take you further, man, like it should be. We got a legend in the building. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. We got a legend in the building. The one and only. We got the one and only Eddie Long Jr. is in the building. How you feeling, son? I'm great, man. I'm great. Listen, you, you, you keep blowing me away when you hit me with that L word, that legendary. I, <laughs> listen. Appreciate you. Thank yeah. you. Shout out to the whole word family, the whole word church. Shout out to the cast, the co-host, and everything. And it's such a good pleasure to meet you in person. Uh, you know, just having that PK connection. You feel man, me? So already, I'm excited to be here in the land. We already been vibing, man. We took him around the church. Uh, I say legend, man. I've been watching you since I was a kid, literally, wow. man. So I mean, you never know. Yeah, YouTube. I mean, literally. So so always appreciated your boldness, wow. your truthfulness. You know, you was never one to, to hold back or to, you talk that talk, man. Ain't nothing so. gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's gonna change. We out here. I appreciate it. Lie, tell him, man, he don't come with not, without the credentials. Listen, tell him about him a little we're bit. We're talking stellar award winning radio host. We're wow. talking songwriter. We're talking two time honorary doctoral recipient. We're talking licensed minister. I mean, it's just such an amazing opportunity to be here with you. And then Arthur, which we're going to get into your most recent publication. So again, just an honor to be here. Thank and you. thank you for coming in studio. This is our, our first. Our first in the studio. In the yeah. studio, except Pops. It's it's pops. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, I'm not one of those ministers that, you know, just want to come preach and then go straight to the back. No, I want to touch the hands. You feel real, me? I want to be out with the people. You feel me? Yeah. Take me to the roughest spot of the city and let's yeah. post up for real. Yeah. You know what I'm Mm. So we here. Hey. Let's go. He ain't far. Let's go. Yeah. Baby. Let's go. We can take you to eat. We can take you to the kitchen. <laughs> take you down there, baby. Garden Valley. We can take him down there. <laughs> I want to know all of that. Hey, welcome to the city, man. For real, for real. I, I mean, uh, it, it's so many things we got to jump into. We we know the book is dropping. It already is dropped, man. And uh, son of a bishop. Already. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we were saying that last Scary night. I said I like it. that one. Mm. I get to get a little son of a bishop. Huh? <laughs> you scared me. I like that. Was that intentional with that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. Wrong. You that's know what I'm saying? Folks cuss already. Let's right. go there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> Let's put God. it on the cover. I love him. I love him already, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. But, so, so we got to talk about that. Um, of course, man, I mean, legendary family. Mm. Legendary family. You you literally are talking. I was explaining to them, yeah. my, my co-host here, as they'll tell you, you know, Shaq, how long you been rocking with the Lord? <laughs> What's today? <laughs> January 15th yeah. wow. is the day that I got saved for myself, January 15th of this year. I love it. Praise the Lord. That's, That's amazing. amazing. And, and lies again. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a church historian, so I was breaking them down to them like, y'all, you talking about royalty when it comes to the, the gospel kingdom and uh, the impact that your family has had on the nation. I mean, it's it's a lot of cop copycats, but y'all are mm. some uh, original gangsters. Mm. So, you know, of course we wanna know, man, again, just growing up in that life, mm -hmm. growing up in that life, man, of of being a PK to the prominent. I mean, at that time, I was telling them, you see Jake's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much Eddie Long uh, on, I mean, really, it was like steroids. I mean, mm -hmm. compared during that time, it was it was nothing like in the early two thousands and even before then. Yeah. So, what was it like for you? Um, you know, that's a question you probably get often as well. Right. You know what I'm saying. Right. And uh, I, I tell folks, it's all I ever know. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah. So, people see that. You know what I'm saying. But I'm not like LeBron's kids. You know, I can imagine Brian and them are what, like 18, yeah, like 16, 18, and yeah. so on. Brian been in the league how many years? 20, 20 something. Yeah, so 20 that's something. all they know right. is NBA, dad. You feel me? Yeah. That's not my story. Got you. My story is I was with my dad when we came to New Birth. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm five years old. Mm -hmm. You follow me? We just on the heels of being evicted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Him and my mom on the heels two, three years before that having been divorced. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Oh, so wow. 
I, I, I'm, I see this thing from a whole nother perspective, mm -hmm. really out the mud with it mm -hmm. and just coming and that's why I was telling you my first job in the church, my first job in life was a janitor, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my, my, my father wanted me to understand what he understood. He's like, son, I used to push pig slop, you know, to make ends meet. So I never want you in a space where you feel like you're too good to do something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we just move like that. We are truly a community family. It's not, this is That's before good. social, right? you know? So we're not posting for clicks and likes, doing this and that and the third for clickbait. This is really who we are. And so what it was like is just that. Growing up with real people, I'm spending the night of a member's houses, deacon houses. I'm spending out of a friend's house to, to, to creep out, to go to the club. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. As he's growing, now I had to learn how to move. That's good. Versus growing, this is your pops and this is how you move. No, I got a regular dad. Y'all see him as this, I see him mm. as dad. Mm. And so it, it, it's a, uh, a concept I came up with that I call the slash syndrome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm because when we come to new birth, new yeah. birth is probably, I don't know, I think it's like a year and a half old at the time and, or young at the time. And so we come in, my dad is dad to me, just became minister long mm -hmm. at the other churches he was gotcha. speaking at. And now he's becoming pastor. So each slash started to interrupt our son father time. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. What was grow that like up. for you? Like, did you, yeah. did you, did you resent it right away? No, no, no. I never really, um, I never really resented it right. until we went through all that bull crap. Mm. You follow me? Yeah. Or, or, or as that stuff was emerging. Gotcha. Because I could start to see things. I could start to see people attaching to him for they come up. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that causes me to look at people. any situation, anybody that I see going through anything. Yeah. I don't just jump on what social say i don't just jump on what such and such says i look at it just like these cameras i'm gonna step back and look at it like a director from every angle because really somebody's just running the play mm. and you got to see who is at the switcher mm. who's running the play and what the true agenda is you follow what i'm saying mm -hmm. and you know so so coming up most of the people who my dad was mentoring uh you know, the slash is sliding in. At first I celebrated it mm. because it was like, oh, I'm, you know, I got, you know, some, 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 some bros, some, yeah. you know, these people became my friends. You know, people who uh, were celebrating him were blessing us mm. in a period. Got you. So maybe I bought into the mess, <laughs> you mm. know what I'm saying? Uh, the illusion, if you will. Uh, but it wasn't until, you know, getting into really, really being set in adult life, you just start to peep game. Mm -hmm. yeah. and see things differently. Yeah, that's real. So did you ever feel pressured to go into ministry or was this something that you just kind of naturally walked into? Yes and no. Okay. Um, the pressure I felt, so I went to FAM, the best HBCU family. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Hey, you were HBCU in here too. Yeah, yeah. Alabama State. Who, who you represent? Alabama State. I ain't mad at it. I'm not <laughs> mad at what I'm <laughs> You didn't say it with no confidence though. <laughs> you know. State. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, so you I think proud. we just took care of y'all last week. Actually, yeah. Actually, <laughs> this, this, this house. might be true. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I went to BCU. You went to where? BCU. What is that? The Crib University. <laughs> hey, I, I'm serious. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I knew a joke was coming. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about that, man. Fam, fam, you and all of that. I was that down there. So I'm down and I lost my mind. That's okay. what, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. knew me as Young Dirty Bishop. Yeah. And so, oh my <laughs> say that again. Young Dirty Bishop. You, you, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So, so. Young Dirty Bishop. So let me let me set that up. Uh, I, I got a chapter in the book actually called Young Dirty Bishop. Yeah. Oh lord. Why I really give my, you, you said January 15. Yeah, yeah. I give my January 15th testimony mm -hmm. when I really came into the Lord. Mm -hmm. But a teammate of mine, Stephen Tooks, um, he gave me the name Dirty Bishop. It's like our <laughs> junior year, we walk into practice one day. He was like, bro, you just play dirty, man. Like, that's what I was telling you about basketball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he he was like, um, <laughs> and he just, you know, he just hauled off. He was like, well, I'm gonna just start calling you the Dirty Bishop. It's the mm -hmm. Bishop, the Dirty Bishop. Mm -hmm. So it stuck. I use it as my rap name, everything. Oh Lord. That was it. So when I went to fam, I'm on the air doing all of this. Around my junior year, about the end of my junior year, I said, you know what? I feel like I'm gonna have a real career in radio. 
I can't go back to Atlanta playing Lil John from the window to the wall. <laughs> Y'all know what's after that. Yeah. You sweating sweat. already. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Oh, yeah. I, I can't go doing certain things. It's, it's just not going to work there. I can yeah. do it here, but it's not going to work there. Yeah. You feel me? So that was like the first pressure I ever felt of like, dang, bro, I got to like make some adjustments. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we didn't call them thoughts back then. I don't know what term we used oh back then. Goodness. But it was like, I got to cut yeah. them off. You know? Whatever Bops. they was, you Whatever had they them was, I had it, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Bops. And so. Bops. Boppers, yeah. Start, you know, start making these adjustments. I felt that pressure before even we talking about preaching. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Was it was it like that even when you was back home? Like, was you always like the dirty bishop until that transformation in like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Was that only I'm at school? You, I'm going to tell you what got me. I was youth pastoring. Mm. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And I wasn't on I wasn't on I I, I mean I I had really came to like a good place, you know what I'm saying, youth pastor. But in that the first the, the, the young lady who, you know, I relinquished my virginity to mm -hmm. was actually a member of the church. Mm. Low key. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting here. Seriously, dude, it's dude. I'm yeah. sitting here. Now I'm directing the youth ministry. Yeah. I'm walking to one of the youth areas. Yeah. And her dad comes down the hall. Now, I knew he had gotten recently remarried, you know, some things of nature. I think he was an elder, a minister in the church. So he comes, and then I see this little kid come from behind him. And he speaks, hey, yeah, how you doing? So I said, oh, great, man. Who was this guy? Oh, this is um, um, my grandson. But he fumbled with it for a second. And in that 10 or so seconds of him really introducing him, I thought just for a moment, you feel me? Yeah. That it actually was his grandson. Mm. So wait, what I was mean, it? Actually, ha, ha, ha. Was it his son or his I grandson? mean, I thought for a moment it was his May have been his son, may have been his grandson. Gotcha. I was confused. Turns out it was his grandson, as he said. Okay. Which then I'm like, okay, this could be my son. Uh. If this is your grandson. So I walked away and went in my office and sat down. And I said, bro, this could be my son. Mm. Five minutes later, it kicked in and I remembered. She was pregnant when I had sex with her. Mm. Oh, plot oh man! Twist. Plot, plot twist. twist. <laughs> that is a plot twist. So, so, so it was. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> that is. But what got me to chill out was the, the feeling I it. had. Yeah. Because in them five minutes, my <laughs> mind went it. everywhere. So, so when this is happening, hold up. Explain the scenery to me, though. Can I get some water? Like, yeah, we gotta already take a water break with it. Let me. So take me back there. Take me back there. Mm. In this moment, where is the height of new birth pops? You like, like, are you in like the? This is like 2008, bro. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, just America in general. Right. We right. just got Obama. Right. You're in a recession. Jeezy just dropped. My president is black. <laughs> <laughs> this is you true. Know, everybody is just feeling good. You know what I'm saying? We ain't really in the housing crisis yet. Cat's still, you know, flexible with the bag. Yeah. You know, it's just a good time. Yeah. You feel me? My phone texting messages would have reflected that. Mm. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just a good time. Just a great just time a across. Stuff. Yeah. You know, New Birth is doing what it's doing. Pops is on the rampage. He running. I think at that time, Jake's was probably year three or four in Megafest. Just right. faith was on a high, right. if you will. Them five minutes. Man. took all the air mm. out yeah. of my momentum. You mm -hmm. feel me? Yeah. And so I just sat back. I said, yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't have this feeling. Cause I'm thinking, how am I going to tell the church yeah. that your yeah. youth pastor just stepped on the scene? Mm. And you gotta understand this is, what are we in now? 2023? Yeah. So this 15 years ago. Right. It's normal now for a youth pastor to yeah. come out and say he got kids. And that's the thing, like, and, and see, Pops and I was talking about this a minute ago. See, back then, you know, to have a nice, I'm sure you know all about it. You had a nice house or mm. you got a nice car. They was coming after all of that mm -hmm. stuff. 
Like you had, you did one little thing, mm. you know, now I don't know if it's good or bad. You can come back from a lot of stuff now. Yeah. You can even, you know, back in the, you couldn't really get a divorce and really bounce back from it. Right. Now you kind of able to do that as a pastor. You mm -hmm. couldn't really have another child and, but, but it's kind of normalized. But back then, if you would have been, came out like. I would have been a pioneer. It would have been. <laughs> you said I would have been <laughs> Absolutely. You would have, mm -hmm. and that's, yeah. So, so were you like happy? <laughs> To be the youth leader, or was it like a? So that's a, that's a different. I was put in to be the youth leader. I got called. Mm. Now, not a second Samuel, you know, first Samuel, second Samuel call, you know, no. I I, I got the call from my daddy. Mm. You follow me? Yep. I'm doing my thing on radio. You know, that's why I'm proud of y'all. Y'all living your dream. You got the podcast. Yeah. You branded it. We number one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep pushing it. Keep yeah. pushing it. Keep pushing it. Because you're speaking it. Yes, sir. You follow me? So at this time. I'm syndicated, independently syndicated. I'm on 16 radio stations throughout mm -hmm. the Southeast, Virginia, New Orleans, wow. uh, Jacksonville, Florida, you know what I'm saying? Macon, Georgia, Savannah. I mean, just, you know, all about. And we taking meetings with Premier Radio and, you know, just, just a lot of conversation, a lot of motion. My pops calls me, he's like, look, I know you're doing your thing, but I need you to come youth pastor. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, bruh, you you know what's what's going on. Yeah. But how you gonna tell the man mm. that is looked out for you and during it every way? Nah. Yeah. And knowing my dad, he's not gonna call you and tell you, I need you. Like them ain't really words I heard him use before. Mm. Unless he absolutely needed me. So I couldn't say no. Mm. And so I stepped back from the mic, or I should I say switch mics. Mm. Right. You follow me? Right. And went ahead and rolled into, but I had no desire to youth pastor, no desire to do none of that. Cause I knew what I was up to, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we fly into that and I'm still not thinking about preaching. I'm thinking, look, I'll just events, you know, host X, Y, and Z. But this really caused me to have to really get immersed in the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really switch gears. Right. And really start taking some stuff that I've been around and dabbled in really serious. Mm. Yeah. You feel me? That's good. No, for sure. For sure. Go ahead, Shaq. What was that? No, I was talking about something. So I, I, I think that's interesting, man. And like, do you know why he needed you so bad? Like what was happening with the former? Because the other guy left. He just left. <laughs> yeah, so. they had to get rid of him. <laughs> Let me, I said yeah. it too nice. They had to get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some other things was going on. Yeah. And you know, well, let me not speak too much because he's a partner of mine. So we, okay, let me, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me cover my brother at the <laughs> yeah, same sure, time. But that's sure. yeah. So, but so it was stuff. just it was it was time. That was it. It was time. So um, and you was preaching what? Like what was the youth ministry banging? So was, it was always up because I was. So so let me say this. I was like the mascot before then. Okay, gotcha. You follow me? Like you yeah. said, you watch co content, etc. I was always hosting youth conferences. Yeah. You know, doing all those things, but I wasn't doing the grunt work, if you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. So now I got to do that, and now I got to go ahead and do the grunt work. Got to be the director. You mm -hmm. was the mascot, not the leader. You okay. feel me? Yeah. yeah. So now you got to come out the stands, bro. We need you on the floor and then run up in the stands too. Serve the popcorn and shoot the shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, having to do this thing both ways. Uh, but I, I adapted. When, when, when did you realize, like, your, your family was, like, it was banging? Like, like the church was banging? Like, because you – you come from this dirt situation, like you said, where y'all ain't, it wasn't handed to y'all. You saw the client. Are you the oldest? I'm the oldest biological. You the oldest biological. And I have an older uh, adopted sibling. Got you. Mm -hmm. So that means, again, like my older brother, you kind of saw uh, literally the climb. Yeah. So when was it during the climb where you like, oh, shoot, Pop's got something going right now? And, and when you felt that, was it like, man, I respect this and I want to jump in? Or like, what was that initial feelings when you realized it? It's going to sound strange, but I think I always felt like that. You always felt like that? Yeah. Mm. Just knowing just just who we are as longs. You follow mm. me? Uh, and it, it's deeper than my dad. It goes, my, my granddad was, he was a hard Negro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that's on my dad's side. My, my mother's father is a legend in his city. Mm. He like the first African-American entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Came out the military and boom, uh, before Uber and all this stuff, he had a taxi company. You follow me? Yeah. That that provided transportation to African Americans because Yellow Cab wasn't picking us up. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, so it, it's just th that's something that concerns me about church folk now, church mm -hmm. leaders, church pastors now, 
is you see cats who never had, was probably goof troop in school, mm. you follow me? <laughs> but now something happened, they popping, and it's like, bro, you rocking crazy chains. Yeah. You, it don't even look right on you. Mm. You can just tell it's, it's like, okay, <laughs> you're trying to, versus for us, everybody knew my dad was the trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Churches didn't have logos before he went and got the New Birth Crest. Mm -hmm. Now that's normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pop, muscle shirts. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Me, I'm on stage in church rapping. Yeah. Braids in my hair, et cetera. You feel me? Yeah. It, it's, it's so I, I don't have that moment of it was just you uh -huh. was it. it just this is who we are. You you just mentioned it, man. That the cover photo, one of the cover photos I saw in your book is with you on stage right there mm. with the braids. Absolutely. And then pops, and it was just like, you know, I know that was the Bow Wow era and all of that, but <laughs> were you the first one to, in the church like with the with the braids? I think like, it was my, my friends and I, that's just what we did. That's just what y'all did. It's just what it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? In Atlanta. That's it. It was just, yeah. You, you know, and, 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 and to your point, you understand who, who, who that's an Atlanta feel mm -hmm. for old Atlanta. I, I don't know what this new Atlanta is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But old Atlanta, you know, Outkast raised us. Mm. Goody Mob, Dungeon Family, you feel me? JD, I mean, music, we still run music. And it's not just music, it's culture, culture. in yeah. general. And so before the world, before 3000 got on stage and said, look, man, the South got something to say. We was already talking to each other in the eight. Yeah. We trading swag, we picking up on stuff. It's good, slouch socks, doing this. So we're not afraid to be courageous, flamboyant, you know, mm -hmm. it's just who we are. And then we got the spotlight. And it's like, oh, y'all just seeing how we kick it every day anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it's so magnetic. That's why the world has drawn us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why Atlanta is like still the fastest growing city in the country. Yeah. It's just who we are. It's growing. And you mix that with faith. Now you take the natural and it becomes supernatural. Mm. I love that. You mentioned the music. Y'all got to ask him about that playlist. Yeah, yeah. So I hear you saying, hold on, my fault, yeah. I hear you saying, uh, talk, <laughs> don't do too much. I hear you saying, um, like Outkast, Goody Mob, mm -hmm. and, and all these different um, artists and gr artist groups. What? Who is on your playlist? Oh, we passing the ox. I got you. When you get the when you get the car, you leave here. What is gonna happen in your car? Who is in there? Man, honestly, it's never no telling, bro. Real talk, um, <laughs> my ox game is like straight uh, heaven to hell, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. Hey, what can it start with? What may it end with? It might start off with a sermon from Charles Stanley. Okay. You follow me? And then, um, you know, that thing might end with, uh, what's the joint? Give me one margarita. I'm a Oh! <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm just, so can you talk about that? Because <laughs> Christians act like they can't listen to secular music. Say it again. Christians act like they can't listen to secular so, music. So, see, so what is your, what is, oh, I'm not saying Jesus. they can't. See, we had the words. I got to give you the word. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got to give you the word. No. Beyond Sunday, I got to give you the word. Yeah. I was talking with a guy once, right? <laughs> uh, we actually worked together, you know, and, and um, he he's went on to be a pastor. His name is uh, Darius Wise, and, and now he's, uh, a bank president, very proud of what he's doing and all of that. But he's been married for years, like mm -hmm. eons. You know what I'm saying? We about the same age, but he's been married. And I asked him one day, I was like, bro, I said, I seen you listening to such, such, such. I'm like, so how do you listen to that? And he was like, well, you know, I'm married. Mm -hmm. So I can go actually act out what the song is talking about, and you can't. Mm -hmm. I know oh, you yeah. do, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't. You feel me? Yeah. Not posed to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not posed to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so that one statement just really brought in my horizons. Mm. And it made marriage exciting to me then. Mm. Because it's like, okay, so when I get with boom, 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 yeah. then I can. She gonna have sweat, one margarita. Sweat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I can go ahead and do that. Now you can you let it start dripping. You now you can let the windows to the walls. So, so I'm not I'm not sure who's gonna watch this. You know, I know I I can imagine, you know, yeah. lineals, you know, right. Gen Z is all of that. So so I gotta I gotta get this, because I'm still responsible for y'all. All right. Yeah. It's it's you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't listen to those things. Because one, what it's pushing us to do. Yeah. All right. Number two, number two, the maturity level. Yeah. Mo most I mean, like you said, you you bro, you Really, we're giving you birth right now. You know, yeah. you just got saved. You now, now you, you know, what I'm saying you, you, you in this thing. Yeah. So I don't know where your maturity level may be at yeah. to 
handle certain things. Yeah. Wow. And it's really not my job to drop that on you and, and use you as a as a test subject to see if you can handle it. That's good. Versus just telling you, man, for a set time. Cause if you so so I'm being funny, but i I really like that song. I can tell you what you say all the way to five. But the, but but the artist on the song, what she says is her and her man, and she's actually married, mm. and she's got a very healthy marriage. If you go to her social, she got some like four hundred thousand followers now. Mm. Song blew her up, and her and her husband do a whole bunch of skits together. So she's saying in it, I'm talking about me and my husband. I'm not really talking about just some random guy at the bar got you. who I'm gonna open my legs to. Yeah. So it don't dishonor God. So I can rap this, <laughs> go to the house. Boom, 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 on my wife booty and be like, hey, come ah! on, you know what I'm talking about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The next steps versus having all this, building all this up, and it's like, well, where's my outlet? Yeah. yeah. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the difference. Yeah. So that's why I can go from Charles Stanley to my dad to this to her yeah. and then that. Because I can live in all of it. Yeah. There, there literally is freedom in righteousness. Facts. There's freedom never looked in, at it like in, in all that. It's a, it's a great perspective, man. What is, yeah, that's good. So y'all, y'all chill out. Me. <laughs> hey, ah! Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This your man's? This your man's? But he on it though. He on it. This, this, this. this your man's? We lit. Oh, you know, yeah. What they talking I'm a, about out here is that. Hey. I'm a DJ, so I listen to all different types of music. But I listen to, like, I'm, I'm decent. You feel me? I, got, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, you saying you're holding it down? Track. Yeah, I'm, de I'm decent. But I'm I, like decent. I said, I'm a, I know being a DJ is about crowd control. So you literally using music to control the crowd. So I know what music can do to you. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's powerful. It's man. a different perspective where I'm looking. And you you from Atlanta, so I mean that's. Like I know, y'all. Mm -hmm. So go further. If you got that crowd control, yeah. If Lucifer was the angel of music, mm. then that's that's his whole bag right Facts. there. That's right. his whole bag. So in radio, we use a term called programming. Mm. Mm. That's why the persons that I usually report it to as on their talent, on their host, on their personality is the program director. Mm. So these are things I never forget. When you're listening to the radio station, that's why you'll hear the same song over every over. two or three hours because mm. someone has programmed that. So when they say you're listening to the such and such such program, you, you, me, they're attempting to program us mm. to mm. something. Think about it. most of the music we listen to now on the radio, and I don't know what the station is here, Yeah, but it's really trash. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not going to call their names because I may have to minister to them one day. But a lot of them don't even rap on beat. They're not even in pocket, bro. And these yeah. songs is blowing up because they're programming a generation. Mm. It's garbage music, but it's programming. It's programming us to keep having to go to Planned Parenthood. Mm. It's programming us to have to go buy that morning after pill. Yeah. It's programming us to all this. The devil is still yeah. programming. Yeah. Generation after generation after generation. Wow. Yep. And so this is the maturity stuff that I'm talking about. Well, I know I can listen to things and I can drop that crap and keep it moving. Right. But I don't want to push that on the emerging generations. Because they're sticking to them. Did you, did, did you, did you feel like, because clearly the gospel is all over you. Praise God. Did you feel like, man, the weight, I mean, you're the namesake, right? Mm. So... Did you feel that weight growing up and even to this day of like the, the pressure to, to keep the gospel going in your family or to keep that legacy going of preaching and, and, and that anointing like because you are the namesake Praise of God. the, you know, the legendary Eddie Long. So how, how, how did that go for you being the namesake? Uh, I don't feel the pressure. If anything, I got a little bit of an attitude and a chip on my shoulder mm. Mm. because I don't think that people have done right. Mm. A lot of Negroes say a lot of different things about my dad. And oftentimes it's people who he may have influenced the most mm. that either ran and tucked their tails, aligned themselves with other people because they just didn't have the fortitude to stand, if you will. And so if anything, I pressure them to do what's right. Yeah. 
step up, bro. Mm. Don't don't keep making the faith so watered down. Be the messages that we preach. Mm. Yeah. And so they're, they're, if anything, I've had a disappointment in others to not step up and do certain things. To be honest with you, most of the people who I've come across have been afraid to put their hand on me, mm. have been afraid to utilize me. Now, these are not my words, these are your words. Mm. You mentioned, hey, there, there's an anointing, there's right. a mantle right. that's resting on me. Yeah. I praise God for that. I let everybody else be the judge of that. I know what I walk in. But if that's known by so many of my dad's peers and pastors, leaders, just maybe a tier below, an age below, et cetera, bro, I should be out here everywhere. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. And there was a period when we were up, I was everywhere, all conferences, boom, 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 all this kind of stuff. But when things shift, then nobody wants to put their hand on you. People don't want to be associated. Even if they know something was not true or not right, folks just don't want that smoke. Mm. Mm -hmm. I've come to realize oftentimes, it may be because they may have a similar flame brewing mm. and they don't want that attention to come their way. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. Or they just don't know what to do. And so instead of doing what's right, they do nothing. You feel me? Got you. So where I'm at is truly trying to push people again. Let's be this gospel that we're talking about. Mm. I find more favor in the world than in the faith. Really? Mm. And that's not good. So, so a lot of people in the gospel, when everything started to go down, 2010, mm. everything is happening, you and literally, it's in your household. I mean, you, you see in the what everybody else don't see. Mm -hmm. You got to take all of this from people attacking your father, saying this, saying that. And you saw a switch of people kind of starting to switch up on y'all that you saying even to this day. Absolutely. It still ain't gone as far as people trying to almost now, before then, hey, come to this conference, come mm -hmm. do this, come speak to our youth. Mm -hmm. Now they, they ain't trying to touch you as much. Man, it goes as far as I'll, I'll be out with people. Oh, man of God, we've been praying for y'all. We, we exchange numbers. I can show you text messages of following up. I'm still on red. Mm. Bro, this is the character we're dealing with? Mm. Now, if I wasn't who I was or who I am and walking into, I would never put them folks on blast. Yeah. Mm. That's just not, you still deal with people how you want to be dealt with. Yeah. But just for your own PR, let me re at least respond. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let you know? On red with it. Yeah. So now I think I become the lighthouse. Mm. What I mean when I say that is that if you was to hit me up, if I was to see you doing something on social, I would call you and say, hey man, watch out. Mm. Mm. That's a rock. <laughs> Where you said just, I'm just going there, you know, hey, go go get your, you know, go do the go. But just, it might not be genuine. Mm. Yeah. So at least you know what you're getting into. Wow. You so you, you will let people know like, they ain't treat me right, watch out. I think a real friend should, should look out. That, that, I mean, what else are we talking about? Has it has it made you spiteful at all, or like I went through that season? Absolutely. Of looking at people like, man, I just can't trust nobody, or I just, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. a lot of PKs, <clears throat> you see, you see the worst of it. You see people that again, at a certain point, hey, if something happened to me, maybe mom or dad would say to you, hey, go to them, or mm -hmm. or if some, hey, they got our back. Then those same people could switch up on you. Mm -hmm. It can make you look at people a little bit different. Not a little bit. Yeah. A lot of a bit. Lot completely. Different. Did you just go how he that? panning that camera right there? Yeah, you just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's that's daily for me. Mm. See, here's the thing. You never want to lose the gifting that God has given you. Mm. You want to mature in the gifting, so that you can handle the revelation that comes with it. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Moses, as a leader, maybe he didn't know how hard it is to lead people. That they'll be following you one day when they're getting what they want, fresh manner. But then when that ain't working and this and we got to go a different direction, they'll, them same people that you've been blessing will talk about you and murmur and conspire off you. Yeah. But then they'll come back around and praise you and bring some. How you balance that? You can't switch up because as a leader, you're the demonstration. Yeah. And so. But that could be tough, man. Very tough. Yeah. 
Very tough. Yeah. Mentorship ain't easy. Growing ain't easy. That's yeah. real. Being a child of God ain't easy. That's real. You feel me? Yeah. But what happens is that if you stick the course, then you can mature to the place where you can peep game, but you don't have the negative emotion mm. accompanying it anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, I see Good. you. Now I know my responsibility. My responsibility is not to get mad at you. My responsibility is not to be peed off. My responsibility now is to show you a different kind of love. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna have to pull you in closer. Yeah. Cause maybe you ain't seen this. Maybe you've been in other church environments or whatever, where you got coached that this is the norm or this is how you do this thing and it ain't right. Mm. Maybe that's my blessing to you now, is to walk this out with that's you. Good. You feel me? Yeah. Giving like grace, mm, real good. grace, forgiveness, and being wisdom. Mm. Telling them instead of being like, oh, grace and, uh, what did I say? Grace, wisdom. forgiveness, and Grace, wisdom. forgiveness, and wisdom. Like, instead of, oh, yeah, I, I got to stay away from you. It's more of a, like, what's, why, why are they acting like that? Can I, can I steer them in a, another direction, you mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's really, like, that's, that's good. I yeah. mean, look at when the baby went through his situation. Yeah. And it really wasn't nothing. Right. To be honest. Yeah. He said how he felt, and some people got upset right. or offended. The industry took their hand off of him. Kanye stepped in and demonstrated Christ. Mm. Put him on the biggest concert he had going on, down the street from where we at over in Chicago. Mm. And here we go. That's what leaders in the faith should always be right. doing. If we hear anybody going through something, we deal with you now. Hey, bro, that's not cool. You can't be doing that. Yeah. But, bro, I'm going to love you to life. Yeah. yeah. And we fail with a capital F in that category. Mm. Mm. Is, is, it, is, there, is there anybody out there that did that for you? Like, Just is this brought some, me in? Yeah, is there some real ones out there that kind of put their arms around you? Or during that time, you could remember, like, man, this guy, this preacher, this whatever, in the, in the gospel. There are a lot of people who wouldn't be known. Mm. So I speak at a lot of smaller ministries now. Mm. Yeah. I speak at ministries that are, you know, 50 people, 100 yeah. people, give or take. And I'm blessed to be there because yeah. I don't count numbers. I don't care about that. Yeah. But I'm smart enough to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And these are the people who I didn't have the platform mm. to say X, Y, and Z. But we've been rocking with, man, my church is here. We pray for y'all all the time. Wow. We, we this, that, and the third. I can show you receipts. We kept sewing into y'all. Mm. You follow me? Mm. There are others who along the way who are large, if you will, that have met with me privately, that have reached out in private, et cetera, et cetera. And it's appreciated because I'm past the point of being upset about what you didn't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to grow to the place of, let me count it all joy. Mm. It's the word say, count it all joy because some plant, some water, mm. but I see God bringing the increase in my life regardless. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? No, mm -hmm. that's good. That's good. And so I just roll with it now. You just roll with it. Yeah. That's it. That's good. So, son of a bishop. Mm -hmm. Your latest. You want to say that again? <laughs> <laughs> son of a bishop. Son of a bishop. Your latest memoir. What lessons or takeaways do you want readers to take away from reading? The biggest takeaway, and that's a great question. Mm -hmm. Biggest takeaway is that I want people to know who my father is. And I say is because one, the spirit doesn't die. You follow me? Yes, Number two is that the lessons taught are still teaching. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people hit me up on a daily basis like, I don't go to church no more, but I watch your daddy every week on repeat in his fresh manner like he just preached it today. Mm -hmm. That's a living word. You follow me? And that needs to be known. I want people to know what kind of father he was, mm. and then understand how I'm developing into who I am. Yeah. Because it's, our, our bloodline is unorthodox. I don't hoop, <laughs> uh -huh. tune up, none of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not what we do. I don't do certain church things, but it's all gospel things, yeah. if you will. And so for folks just to get mm. that revelation. That's good. And then number two is for households to genuinely be blessed. That's why it's 14 stories I'm selling. It's about, you know, 
how my dad dealt with me on what music I was listening to. That chapter is called uh, Parental Advisory. Because a lot of parents, we talking about the music now. Absolutely. How do I choose what my kids gonna listen to? Or how do I reprimand them if they get out of line or whatever? Well, here's a lesson that my dad taught me that can help your household. Mm -hmm. And you were a rapper. And I was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. here we go. Uh, they teaching sex in school. Now they got the LGBTQ books in school. I was in some department store the other day. It's right there on the shelf. Yeah. And I got a 15 month old son. Mm. I'm scratching my head for a moment. How, well, you ain't got to think about it. Go back mm. to what you wrote in your book. Go back to how your dad taught you. Because I got a lesson in there. The chapter's called Sex Ed. You follow me? Another chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's called Boom. Talks about how I learned how to hear the voice of the Lord by observing my father hear the voice, voice of the Lord. So it's just all of these different topics you, to help the household. Go you, ahead. You, you mentioned what, what type of father he was. We'll, mm. we'll learn in there. Give us a little, a little sneak peek. We, we see the, the public Eddie Long, the private one. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Honestly, what you see is what you get. Mm. It's just more of it and in unique circumstances. Yeah. You know, Pop was um, a comedian. Mm. You know, he gonna laugh with you. He gonna joke with you. But then he was also uh, an authoritarian. Mm. So what he said was what he said. Mm. And you know, you wanna dance around all you want to, then he come in and bust you in the chest. <laughs> That's just, and you be mid-sentence. He, the same way he heard from the Holy Spirit while he's preaching, he would hear from the unholy spirit out your mouth while you talking to him trying to explain your story. Well, you know, I did this and I didn't mean to do that. Or, you know, you telling your whole lie, whatever, mid-sentence. Boom! Mm -hmm. Middle of your chest. Because he knows. Revelation just coming. <laughs> so so he was the same. It's just... Bring the revelation. <laughs> revelation. <laughs> <laughs> it's brought out. When, when, when you... He, he, was, he was such a warrior. Mm. And you had to see the warrior, the, the hero, go through this sickness. Mm. And just how was that man for you, your family, your mother? And, I mean, he, he fought through it. Literally mm -hmm. teaching through it. Mm-hmm. And what, what did that do for you? What did that show you about his character? And how did that kind of impact your family, man? Man, faith became just, just even realer. Mm. You feel me? And, I, and I'm going to make it plain. So one, we worked out together. Pop at that time was probably like 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now his life weight is like between like 220, 240. Right. You feel me? Come on, we're going downstairs to work out. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm with you. Mm -hmm. You're going to need somebody to spot you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, he was still throwing weight. Mm. And I'm sitting here like, bro, your arms is all small. Where's this strength coming from? So I'm realizing this ain't, this, not, this wasn't muscle strength. So I'm thinking back, man, yo, this ain't muscle strength. This is some other kind of strength. Mm. I'm curling, you know, 35, 40, like, okay, let me pace myself. He done grabbed 50 and 60. Swinging it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I understood then that he's got some other kind of strength that he's not just tapping into when he's preaching. This is where he lived from. Mm. You feel me? While we're working out, every time we're doing something, if we say we're going to do 60 reps, he will hit you with 61. I'm like, what's up with this? He said, I had to recondition my mind. I got a chapter, I call it One More Rep. He said, when them lawsuits took place, I realized I wasn't running a sprint, that this was going to be a marathon. Mm. And I had to condition myself to always go the extra mile. Sorry. So it's one more rep. So that's how I work out now. Mm. Anytime I do something, somebody say you do 11, I'm doing 12. Because it's a mental toughness that's being reverberated. You feel me? Yeah. You just, you just massaging that thing in. And then it's contagious to those who are around you. Man, that's you follow cool. me? That's good. We sitting here and he chose to take the path that he wanted to take for his healer. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's got suggestions. I'm sure your dad, be like, oh, uh, doctor, you know, we got this new health thing, it'll help you lose weight, you can yeah. do this and da, da, da. You know, people, everybody got their remedy, if you will. He made a choice and that's the path he took. Now, the beauty about that is it takes me to Hebrews, where it talks about Moses and Abraham and all these. The scripture says, 
that these died in faith, having not seen, I'm sorry, not beheld the promise, but seen it from afar off. They died in faith. They died believing. But when you see someone truly die saying, look, this is what God told me, so this is what I'm sticking to. Mm -hmm. Mm. He didn't necessarily get the healing. Yeah. It was a far off. But he transferred in faith that I'm sticking to this, what I believe God told me. Now, Scripture says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So had he switched up, then he would not have been doing it in faith. And for where he was going, he wouldn't have been pleasing to God. That transformed my whole view Man. on how you yeah. be, how you make a decision and stick with that thing in faith. Yeah. From, from that whole season of the, of the allegations and sickness and everything, mm -hmm. is there anything you wish your father would have done different? We used to wrestle about the church. Mm. And I would be on them like, bro, what, what's, what's, you know, what, what does this look like? Now, before I really started preaching, I really wasn't caring about succession. I don't even think I even knew what that was. <laughs> Just being honest with you. Yeah. You feel me? As things go on, you're working in a place. You're doing this. You're doing that. All of these types of things. You're vested. Revelation. Understanding. It's like this is just this is this is what kingdom is. You feel me? And our bouts were he just didn't want to put that on my siblings eye. Mm -hmm. At least that's what he said to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because after his transition, I've had three different associates of his who don't even know each other all come to me and tell me verbatim the same story, which is your dad wanted you to step into that role. Mm. He just didn't think that you were ready yet. And so I got that. Mm. I know that. That's confirmed with me now. And so I don't get distracted because I know what my daddy really wanted. Mm. And being a father now. You got kids? No, sir. So and my wife is pregnant. I was about to say. Whoa! Yeah, my wife is Boy! Hey! Father of hey. one! Hey! Yes, sir. It's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> RE3 on the it. way, man. I love yes, it. Yes, come sir. on. Come Coming on, soon. man. That's what's up. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's on the way. It's soon. Is that Negro slide out? I don't know if you have a boy or girl. I don't, boy. I don't know. Boy, young yeah. man. Yeah. I love it. Yes, sir. What you think you know is going to be turned upside down. Mm. And being a father, I understand the schizophrenia that my dad was functioning in. Mm. That this is what I want and this is what's right. But I've been through so much crap that I don't want you to have to deal with that, 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 that. And so as a father covers and protects a son or a daughter, it's very difficult then to send that same son or daughter out to war. Mm. When you've been out there getting your book kicked. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And so, I get it. My thing was, bro, you trained, you trained us to be soldiers. You're a gladiator. So when, when that was happening, you was asking him like pops, like make me the successor. I never said that. Okay. But you wanted to. I wanted to ensure that everything that he preaches, everything that he spoke, the kingdom that is represented was properly transferred because there's so many others who are watching that. So I'm gonna tell you what's happening. You have kingdom, which is transfer, all right? Then you have church, which is selected and voted on. Hmm. So you got kingdom, monarchy, all of that. Then you got companies and the worldly way to do things. If we look at our God, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, a lineage, Israel, a whole nation. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeshua comes as the begotten son, and he tells you and I that we are what? Joint heirs. Mm -hmm. 
to inherit and walk in. Churches oftentimes keep starting over because they vote on a new leader to come in that has no connection to what's been established. And so now it restarts and it restarts and we don't build. I really think that that is a, a issue with black folk. Yeah. That we don't truly understand. If you think about it, right now, most people are first or second generation in Abs whatever they in. Absolutely. Versus the others. Yeah. Come on, dynasty. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this with it. So everything happens, of course, at this moment right now, as we're speaking presently, mm -hmm. pa Pastor Jamal Bryant mm -hmm. is at New Birth. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's a part of my, came up with my dad, of mm -hmm. course, that whole generation of pastors. They are in that, that They're, generation X. That generation mm -hmm. X, man. So, so of course, like a, like a uncle to me treated me right. So all love for him, but for you personally, mm -hmm. my question to you is, how do you feel about the state of new birth right now? Mm -hmm. Are you good with that? Are you settled? Or are you still feeling as if a little unsettled in your spirit? Uh, definitely unsettled in my spirit. Mm. And actually unsettled is not the word. I'm very settled in my spirit. Okay. Because I know what's going on. Mm. When I say I know what's going on, I don't know what's going on at the church. I don't follow the church on social. I'm not involved. My phone doesn't ring to be part of anything unless a legacy member may transition and their family may call and say, hey, we'd like Ed to do the eulogy or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever within the service. Because again, that's 30 years of relationship that it's just as solid as these floors. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Outside of that, I'm not aware of what's taking place. What I'm aware of is there are many members that reach out to me and say, hey, I'm only here because I don't have anywhere else to go. Mm. The spirit of the house has changed. Um, you know, you get where I'm going. Yeah. And there are many who are starving for a word spiritually because of the word that they're, they grew up on, mm -hmm. the word that built them. And that goes back to what I was talking about, about when, it, when, when church is reset. Yeah. Now what happens to those who built this, where do they go? Are, are you welcome? And Shaggy, you look like you about to jump into. Yeah, I was just about to talk. I was just about to <clears throat> say that I was just talking about. Uh, I was talking about a different church and, and how they did things differently. Mm -hmm. And somebody was explaining to me different cultures. Mm -hmm. So you saying like, as far as like when people get new leaders, it sets a new culture in that church. It can. And 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 it's like, like that. If you're used to the culture of what it used to be. And now you transition into a culture that's different now because of the new leader is unsettling. You see, and and and, and that culture word is a unique word to me mm -hmm. because when we're flowing in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it should just be consistent, mm -hmm. and we should just keep going up in glory. You follow me? Yeah. But if it's a whole new place, then then we got more questions than answers now. Yes, sir. And how did we get here? So I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing, but I'm aware of what's going on. It's different. And it's a very harsh reality for many of us. Yes, and it's in the city so much different now. I mean, the times is different. I'm sure that when, when you guys were at the, at the head, Atlanta's just different in general. Mm -hmm. And of course, like you said, any leader, you bring a different kind of style. It, it, it's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. What I was curious on is, like right now in this moment, Mm -hmm. Are you welcome home if you wanted to go? Let's say you wanted to come on a Sunday, mm -hmm. be a part of it. If you decided right now, hey, I want to join the leadership team. Great question. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think will happen? I feel welcome and unwelcome. Okay. I feel welcomed by that, that, that congregation. Okay. Um, because you got new congregants who may or may not know who I am, who may or may not know who our family is. Then you have legacy congregants who we still talk, text, whatever the case may be. You follow me? Mm -hmm. That is celebrated. Yeah. Then from a leadership standpoint, because there's no communication there, then don't know what to expect. And when you've tried to make communication and it's not received, then you, there's no way you could feel welcome. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. It's just the reality of it. That's the reality of it mm -hmm. right now. But you, 
is that you don't like that or you are you okay with as like you said are you just are at, at let's peace start with the it? peacemakers mm. it's words of jesus beatitudes and so peacemaking sometimes it requires tension mm. sometimes if you and i and guys can do this i don't know about young ladies sometimes <laughs> But guys can get in a straight out fight. Right. And then be cool. And then, and then be go cool play basketball right, right, right there. Yeah. In the right, center. right. Be cool right after. But we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Bro, that was up, bro. Yeah. Don't do that no more, man. Right. So we now set a standard of what was done, how it was offensive, and how we move on. Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Many people will run away from the confrontation because that confrontation causes them to have to really face themselves. Mm. Yeah. So. Oftentimes, we just have to sit in the position of, I'm a peacemaker. And whenever that peaceful opportunity presents itself, then I'm ready to make peace. So you are open to it. Though. Absolutely. You yeah. heard what I said? Yeah. You reach out. You don't get no response. You call, you text, you email. Gotcha. Y'all hit me back. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, I put you in the chat. I'm like, get that fake account out of here, man. Ah! <laughs> he was like, no, he coming to the city. Let's. I'm like, let's do it. Let's absolutely go. do it. You know, because yeah. you hear everybody's story mm -hmm. about y'all, right? But it's you know, you don't really hear y'all's story as often from y'all. It's a lot of ventriloquists out there, and, and that's what you're doing in your book, mm. Son of a Bishop. Come on, you giving us an insight on the real deal story. Absolutely. I think that this is going to get thousands and thousands of views. So when it does, <laughs> y'all go buy this man's book and support him. I think that's interesting, man. New birth. It's so much I want to ask, but Come I'm going to keep it off. You there. said you wanted to keep it at 30 minutes. Y'all say, I'm an open book. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. Yeah, what, 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 we man. up. It's actually a closed book, son of a bishop. Uh, <laughs> son of a bishop. You still living in Atlanta? <laughs> Absolutely. I tried to leave. Yeah, I've, I've tried to just nothing is really taking me anywhere. Are you preaching other than, right now? Absolutely. I pre I mean, invitation. Let's see. I, I was in Carolina, uh, Florida, Alabama in the last two, three weeks. I go. I don't I don't tell nobody, no, unless I just get a, a revelation. Nope. Stay away from that. You yeah. know, other than that, this is who I am, man. You follow me? My dad taught us how to wake up and go to life. Mm. You feel me? Right. People ask, well, who are you? What do you do? X, Y, and Z? I'm like, I really don't know how to answer that question. Mm. I'm me. Orbiter. You right. Uh, orbiter. <laughs> you 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 starting the church again? Would you start a church again? Are you thinking? If about I heard the church? Lord say that, Amen. I would do that. Okay. Yeah. And it would never be my church. Mm. That's a problem with a lot of churches. It's bad. Oh, my church, my church. If it ain't the Lord's church, bro, mm. then we got a problem. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Um what what my attention is on now is just establishing a center. You feel me? Um, the beautiful thing about as you tour me around this campus and all of this, this is this is more than a church. Right. You feel me? Yeah. This is this is an epicenter. Yeah. For this community, people come in and get their health right, their food right, uh, 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 nutrition right, rather, yeah. spiritual life right. You can do some business things. I don't even know what's in your daddy building yet. I'm excited yeah. to go over there. Yeah. People can learn production X, Y, I mean, you got all of this kind. It. This is not just a church. You follow me? And so, you know. Uh, I can't sit on pause. If, if you ask me what would I have expected or desired to have happened in all of the transition concerning that church after my dad's transition, I honestly wasn't focused on being the pastor. You understand, at that time, I didn't have the expectation to be the pastor. Mm -hmm. It's been in the last four, five, six years that people have come to me who didn't even have a relationship with me, who, who, who befriended me and said, let me tell you something your dad told me. He told me this about two years before he passed. He told me this six months before he passed. Mm. You follow me? I'm like, wow, okay. Mm. My expectation was, bro, I'm a son of the house. To this day, I still know that area, that builder, all that stuff better than any preacher that could step in there. Mm -hmm. I built the builder. I worked mm. construction. <laughs> you know what I'm mm. saying? How many Literally acres? was running. 240 man out there running bulldozers and stuff you follow me yeah I am tied to it right through blood sweat and tears it wasn't the opportunity mm. so what I would have expected is to continue working in this place continue advancing the vision 
Titles is really for people to brag about and for their ego. Mm -hmm. That's why David didn't get into the titles. Nobody was at David's coronation ceremony. Right. Just him and the prophet. Right. And he kept doing the work. Others want to be celebrated. That's what I would have expected. And so I, I, I couldn't sit on pause waiting on that. Mm. We got to get to work still. Because yeah. if you got the mantle, you follow me? Yeah. You can wear that thing wherever you go. And the beautiful thing about my father's mantle, I said it during his home going. I said it's on you and it's on you. It's, it, it, it's, he touched so many people that there's so many of us who have different measures mm. of it. And so my thing is just to go. Your dad said on the phone, we was walking the hallway, he said, man, listen, Bishop Long was my hero. Right. Run with the mantle then, bro. Mm. And I'm seeing it. Yeah. Seeing it. The one and only. One and only. Man, Eddie Long Jr. It's all good. Thank we you. so appreciate you, man. Thank y'all. This, this book is a must read i'm looking forward to diving into it even deeper we started it la a couple weeks ago but i, I wow. gotta finish it and uh i think this is gonna help a lot of people man wow. it's interesting this story what y'all did in atlanta what y'all the continuous as you said the offspring hmm. like who who came before we get up out of here out of that church like what's some <laughs> what's some legendary who are some legendary people that like new birth kind of touched them um byron cage John Gray, Sam Collier, William Murphy, Darwin Hobbs. Um, let me go in, down the preacher route. Charles Jenkins mm. got some of the mantle on him. I, I'll let Charles. Y'all gotta have Charles in here. Yeah. Y'all gotta have Charles yeah. Jenkins. He he he'll, he'll tell you uh, uh, some of his stuff. Montel Jordan. Wow. I got a whole chapter that just talks about that. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's the name of that chapter? People are people. Man. Yep, people are people. And Go who, read it. And who's your top five preachers right now before we get up? Eddie Long Jr., top five <laughs> preachers. Who is it? You know, on my, on my radio show uh, on Praise 1025 before they let us go because of the right. pandemic, we got furloughed. Y'all out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were actually going to do a, a versus. Mm. You feel me? Inspire. You know what I'm saying? We, yeah. we, we were going to do That's the whole versus thing was going on <laughs> or what have you. But, um, Top five, man. You got me like Deion Sanders ranking the kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do I rank the anointed guy, man? You put me on the spot. <laughs> or my rush. I, 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 re I really no, love. No numbers, just yeah. your top. Just numbers. Yeah. Okay, just I, I like that better. Yeah, no I numbers. Like that no better. numbers. No I, numbers. I'll say no this. Order. What pastors that have truly impacted me? Let's okay. do that. That's safe. I like Let's that a little bit. Do it better. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Take the safe. Dog, you left me out the top five. What's up with that, bro? Um, Charles Stanley, I mentioned him. My mama used to take me to this church and uh, just a solid guy, just a solid guy, love him. Um, Jasper Williams, Mr. Hoopology himself. Right. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, another guy named Bishop Uriah. Mm. I don't know if y'all got public access TV up here, but my dad and I, we used to watch public TV. Late at night, he'd come on about 11 o'clock at night. He used to sing a little song, uh, if you can't help me, please don't stop me. Mm move out of my way and don't try to block me mm. i was like okay he talking to his haters get the back up yeah. <laughs> it was some ludicrous move <laughs> you know what in a nice way but get him out of here very nice way yeah. very nice way i uh, love him uh, of course miles monroe yeah man we, we we can't escape that and uh my dad bro yeah absolutely yeah absolutely watch this Mm. You feel me? Watch this. There we go. <laughs> watch this, watch this. Love it. Legendary, man. See, I told you I'm new. I'm new, so I gotta go. I gotta go. Look you gotta go do some You guys go home. jump in the crates, go, man. Let me go do my homework. Go do your homework, man. Eddie Long sermons. Yeah, it'll bless you, bro. Yeah, it'll let me bless go do you. Do my man. homework. Beyond Sunday. Listen, we bringing y'all the best that we can, and I think he just blessed your life. Yeah. If this did something for you, y'all know. Help us. Help us to continue to to bring in who we need to bring in man partner with us if this helped you today if you learned something if you were just simply entertained we believe if we could pay for a movie we could pay for netflix subscription we can pay when anybody helps us we believe in giving back to them so partner with us today if this blessed you or if you were simply enter entertained we appreciate y'all this has been another episode of beyond sunday can i say Please something real quick to him. yes sir so what he is saying is cut the check <laughs> ah! <laughs> <That is. laughs>
Y'all see how it. right there. <laughs> Cut it. Give. Cash that man. Allow us to be a blessing to our guests. We believe it. Oh, man, that's, I ain't it, never man. received a love offer from a podcast. Yeah, man, we, we believe Cut in that. Cut the check. <laughs> <laughs> we, believe in that. we believe in that, man. We believe in that. So we love y'all. It's been real. Woo! That's some good content. It was we great. Y'all. We missed y'all. We, we missed back. Y'all. We know we took last week off, man, but we are back and we here to stay. We'll see y'all again next week. Shaq, talk to him. Anything you want to say? Stay holy. Yeah. Stay humble. Yeah. Stay hungry. Y'all <laughs> out of here, man. We out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>